Live from the Plutopia News Network, this is the Plutopia Happy Hour. And our guest this evening is Tracy Schultz, joining us from Austin, and the rest of our team is joining us from all over Central Texas. I'm Scoop Sweeney out here in beautiful Bastrop County. There's Screamish Joy over there on the other side of Bastrop County, and our designated driver, Susie Sheeler in Austin. Hello, Susie. Hello. How are y'all doing tonight? Tracy, thank you so much for coming. This is going to be uh, fun. Yeah, my pleasure. It's like, thank you for the invite. It's like, this is kind of cool. It's like, it's yeah. been a while. Since it's you've been, been interviewed? Yay! It's, it's been a while since I've been interviewed. It's like, that happens every once in a while. But not right not. on. Well, you come back here anytime because so we have, it's fun. We got, we just talk about, you know, but I would love to ever, let everyone know who you are. Um, and you, uh, so Tracy is... I'm going to call you a renaissance man <laughs> because uh, you do a little bit of everything, right? You're, yeah. you're, you interview people, you're a radio host, um, you act a little bit, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you've done all kinds of promotions and events. You do co-op, you do KUTX. Uh, so I could go on and on TV. You did traffic. Were you up in the helicopter, by the way, for that? <laughs> No, no. Okay. I really have been I, as soon as I saw that I was like oh, he's been in a helicopter um so uh <laughs> Tracy has has interviewed a lot of really cool people too he's he's gotten to 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 meet and interview a lot of people um and he works on rag radio uh which I get to to play with sometimes too I come along and, and get to be on that show so tell me how you're doing, what the pandemic's doing. Um, if you had anything you wanted to comment while I was talking, because it looked like you did. Well, it, it's it's uh, it's it's interesting in some ways. It's like I, I forget sometimes. It's like some of the things that I've done. Uh, but uh, uh, for for a year there, I did traffic for the late great comedy 1027 radio station here in town. Hmm. And, and that and it's like it was part of a cluster it's like with several other stations and for for folks that don't know it's like traffic for the the sales side of things is basically scheduling commercials scheduling it's like uh, underwriting and announcements and things along those lines and having that fill out and there, there's certain rules as like you can't have like gentlemen's clubs next to churches and things along those lines it's like so because that comes up every once in a while Wow. Um, and, and separations like, you know, between different like type advertisers and it's stressful and it, I wasn't necessarily the best at it. And whenever they, uh, the powers that be decided that the, the comedy 102 station wasn't doing enough, it's like for the clusters, it's like I, I kind of lost my job when the station's like uh, was, was done. This um, is, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it, and it, it, it is what it is. It's like, but it's just like, I, I had good experiences. And that was kind of like the the high point after it's like spending four years going from an intern, it's like, and then working for free and passing out stickers, it's like to actually getting a paid job, it's like in radio. So I felt, felt mm. like that was a, a success still all the same. So. Right. And, and so who are, so, okay. Out of all of the things that you do, what is your what is your top favorite like i would really like this to be something that i could build on and this go here well um i i got into radio in, in uh, at the beginning of 2009 and i did that it's like basically because at 2008 it's like we had this great uh, recession that caused like a lot of problems for a lot of people and i was working as a draftsman as an engineering at, a, at an engineering company in San Antonio doing high schools and middle schools. Um, but I was taking radio classes on the side for fun. When 2009 happened or came around to be, um, I had, I was let go, but I had a severance package that I doubled down on uh, doing interviews and, uh, and, and, and uh, doing radio and trying to make radio the full-time thing. And that's when I started coming up to Austin. I felt it is like an internship at 101X, but I also came across co-op radio. Co-op co radio is an all-volunteer station that lets you have a lot of leeway. And if I was to say, if there was one thing that I'd like to do, I would like to kind of make co-op radio job the, the full-time thing if I could. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, it's a lot, awesome. lot of a lot of freedom. It's like a it's like a lot of chance it's like to be able to cover a lot of different stories, a lot, a lot meet a lot of different people and hear what they have to say. And and, and I guess it's fun. Can you can you tell people just real quick what co-op is? Because uh some folks who are watching this aren't from Austin. Sure. It's it's kind of a unique thing in the way of the radio landscape. It's a cooperatively ran station. So um, donors are members. They get to vote on the, the how the station is ran and have a say it's like in its programming and, and leadership decisions. And but it's a lot of the programmers are just folks just like that were curious about radio. It's like I I think it's like I I, I would be a, I think this would be fun. And we also get a lot of folks that's like that used to have careers in radio at different aspects and whether technical side or it's like on, on air and, and a few folks that's like have had really decent careers. It's like in communications and they wanted something fun to do and co-op just happens to be there. Um, and they teach you how to, I mean, they, they will teach you how to do everything you need to do to be a programmer, to be a host. I mean, they, they will show you how to do that. And that's like, people take classes for that for years yeah. <laughs> and pay yeah. all kinds of money. If you're just willing to be a volunteer, you know, and come in and, and, and help out. And, you know, it's a, it's a really, really, and I think we can do call to action. I think this is a podcast, <laughs> and, you know, and, and <laughs> donate money. And I mean, this is an important, I think that these kinds of radio stations are super important right now. Mm -hmm. Independent radio stations are vital Lo as we go local forward. Local independent media. We honestly, mm -hmm. I mean, one, we used to have such a rich local independent media landscape in Austin that Anybody who was, you know, here at a certain period of time just got to witness something that I feel like was like unicorn magic, honestly. And yeah. and then that went away and you know, co-op still exists as as that kind of media, you know, but it's like I, I wish I wish, you know, all you know, the the T V and the radio would come back, that we would have these like opportunities yeah. to be able to produce just independent content. Well it's um, it's great it's, that uh, they are actually taking the time to train people because uh, mm -hmm. some of the uh, listener sponsored stations I worked at in the day, uh, it was more competitive than, uh, than, than helpful. People really weren't interested in helping you out. They wanted you to go away because they wanted your slot. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that, that sounds like a much healthier environment that uh, you have at uh, co-op and uh oh yeah it's, and, and it's great that it's listener sponsored because it, it gets really I, I worked at my first jobs in radio back in the early days were a commercial am radio in texas and uh they were uh, they were controlled by the sponsors they were not controlled by the listeners the listeners were just uh, <laughs> people that they hoped tuned in but they were more you know tuned in on making the sponsors happy, you know, whoever's selling cars or whatever, but having mm -hmm. listeners be the sponsors is a, a much healthier environment. It, it's, it's interesting uh, because, well, I, I will say it's like a, a co-op kind of gave me opportunity and, but because of them, I was able to do other things. It's like, and currently it's like on the weekends, I'm also, it's like an on-air talent at KU, KUT, which is the NPR Austin affiliate. And I, I wouldn't necessarily say that too loudly because I'm not a reporter and I don't want to ever it's like uh, be misconstrued as being it's like a, a news guy. I'm more of like a, a technician, but it's like a, and a, and a reader, but it's like a local host. But it's it's been kind of nice to kind of be a part of that. And I got that job because of co-op because it's like a folks that were working at co-op and also working at KUT. And they said, Oh, it's like, you know, he's looking to do something. And so that's somebody really remembered, cool. yeah, somebody remembered me. And so it's like, that, that uh, was nice. I, I will also say it's like during the, the last few years, I did a, a short stint at uh, WOAI AM in uh, San Antonio and living here in the Braunfels for the most part. And then I can make that commute in either direction. Uh, and to what Scoop was saying, yeah, still at uh, some of those like uh, stations that are big size, 
they are uh, advertiser driven. It's like where they would have hour long, um, basically infomercials. Yeah. It's like for yeah. the, the service that the local guy is doing, whether it's a car guy, it's like, or uh, some sort of insurance financial planner guy. And um, the, the, the quirky thing is like about some of that stuff also is it's like you have like uh, shows that are kind of broken into segments and they have like a device uh, that will slightly speed up the audio and they do oh, that. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so they, they do it just enough so it doesn't sound cartoony, but they do that to squeeze an extra 30 seconds to a minute to two minutes that they can sell every hour. Oh yeah. my God! What's it called? What did you say it was called? It, it, well, uh, a harmonizer is one of the devices that helps you do that. Uh, we used to help people uh, create the little. Uh, um, it's it, it, it's like the the verbal uh, or the audio version of the small print in the ads that you see in the newspaper, and they read it. So with, that I was yes. I was it's like it's like kerning and graphic design where you're like yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah it, just, so I can get it eliminates the, it eliminates <laughs> silences and just leave the audio and uh, it, oh I gotcha okay it, yeah. it is a creepy process. <laughs> yeah, and, and and they do that on, on the air. Like they they fire off it's like an audio segment that lasts fifteen minutes, and just like and then you slight you slowly speed it up. It's like with this device to kind of make it as um, as uh, unobtrusive as possible. But it's basically required because it's like you can't run the show and the spots scheduled without it because it's like there's mm -hmm. not enough time in the hours. They they, wow. they book book that far out and it's like and they book that that tightly. And so it's, it's interesting. It was, it was an experience. It was nice. It's like, I didn't last there very long, unfortunately. That also happens in radio. So, so. If yeah, you, that's if, way oh, oh, is, yeah. is that, a, is that really a thing? Well, as, as a technician, it's like, I was kind of like a low man on the totem pole. I was like the guy who was there on Sunday mornings from 6am till noon. And okay. so it's like, I wasn't a voice on the air. I wasn't re a recognizable talent. I was just somebody to kind of help facilitate and you know, low pay, odd hours, and and hiring too many people kind of makes folks stressful. And mm -hmm. uh, when you're like, you're basically fighting for crumbs, and say like between it's like the the various technicians, and so it's like it, it makes it makes for uh, not great um, uh, environment. It's like it's not really conducive. It's like for morale and stuff like that. And so it's like mm -hmm. a, inevitably somebody got mad at me, and I got mad at them. It's like and so it's time. It's like for me to to just kind of all Come right. On. I, yeah. I learned I learned what I wanted I'm to hostile. Yeah, one of my old radio friends uh, used to describe it as the gladiatorial uh, competition because it's your you're like gladiators. They give you your sword and your uh, shield and you go out and try to win in radio. Wow, that is cutthroat kind oh, of stuff. Very, oh, I mean, if yeah, one of my early jobs. Uh, I was the new kid on the block and I, I got the job because I had already done a, a, a jazz radio show. So this uh, station up in Northern Texas hired me. And uh, one of my duties was to do the Sunday morning religious programming, which started at you know, like 5 a.m. And so I had to get in there and the guy that had been doing it, he got moved around and they, I replaced him and he, was on the night and he screwed up the entire transmitter settings settings when he signed up so that I couldn't get on the air the next day. Oh my God. And uh, wow. uh, <laughs> for him, the boss figured out what he had done. It, it wasn't exactly an original stunt. <laughs> so, so he was gone. So I, I survived that gladiator combat, but uh, it, you know, it, it was that way. People would do nasty things to what who they considered the competition. Why? Yeah. What is that? That just so is so weird. It, what, what isn't that called? It's the entitled patient? white I'm guy. Sorry, I thought that just no, like, but wow. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't see. I guess I. I don't. It's surprising to me. All environments are competitive. I mean, at least you know it. That just sounds like a. Like working in a kitchen is like yeah. a competitive oh. cutthroat environment. Like we're yeah. getting, you know, I mean, like it's, it, it's, we don't engender that sort of abundance theory. Like let's all sort of work together and like make things happen. We're kind of a little bit more like, oh no, 
kind of I know I guess it's just you know <laughs> it's just shocking to hear in a in a in a business setting that you would you know yeah. I don't know it sounds mafiosa it, okay, it's, so it's me... weird to me it's weird to me because it's like right? you think it's like uh, all right if you're like between stations and you're worried about uh, ratings and it's like that's a thing and it's like and you're worrying about ad revenue it's like and because it's based off of uh, it's like how many listeners is like are listening to you per quarter and it's like and that gets really crazy it's like that whole system is like it's jacked up it's like it's amazing it's like that 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 nobody's tried to it's like dis dismantle that and start all over again because it's all jacked up but uh, it's like between people in the same building like uh, you know, talk, talking about my time it's like at 101 axis and kgsr and klbj it's like they're all in the same building uh, it's like the, the, the stations could be, it's like literally five feet apart from each other with doors facing each other. And there would be this perceived um, rivalry between the morning shows. It's like, oh, we got to be better than them. Or it's like, or we have to get that comedian in town. You know, it's like those guys, it's like, are just making the rounds and trying to hit as many stations as they can. They don't necessarily care about who gets who first. It's like at 7 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. It's like, because it doesn't really matter. And for the average listener, I wouldn't think it really matters, but it's for, it gets into people's heads. And it's They're like- They're gonna listen to the person that they normally listen to. They're not gonna go, yeah. ooh, who, who has breaking news yeah. on well, KLBJ? Right. <laughs> for a yeah. long time, you know, the broadcasting world was mostly white guys. I mean, <laughs> that's what it was. I was, yeah. I was one of those, <laughs> but I tried not to act like one, but a lot of them did. And it was the- you know, te spraying testosterone all over the microphone, basically, is what you would experience. And it's like, when we got more female talent, it made the job much easier because there was, you know, people calmed down a little bit and they realized that, you know, you didn't have to be, you know, a type A testosterone spraying idiot. You could talk about normal things like we're trying to <laughs> yeah and, and by the way women women have money and they'll spend it give them a show to listen to and advertise to them i don't get the problem so tracy um you have a show right now right you have a, yeah. a show currently can you tell us about it yeah i, I have a show on co-op radio called what's new it appears thursdays at 1 30 p.m currently it's sometimes like uh changes around the dials like a little bit but it's a half hour interview show and um i i get a chance it's like to kind of use that as an excuse to just contact people and yes. <laughs> i've had good luck just randomly contacting people and um that's so great so I, i've gotten press releases for random things and stuff it's like but like the moon tower comedy festival just happened here in austin it's like as well as austin city limits music festival mm -hmm. and I just by just by showing an interest, I've been able like to cover those things and talk to a couple of folks. And they're, they're people I wouldn't have been able to meet otherwise. That I'm a fan of, honestly. Yeah, it's like yeah. kinda, I know that's like uh, there. I, I also try to tell people it's like that I'm not necessarily a, a journalist per se, and because it's like I'm kind of more of a of an interviewer. And I say that mm -hmm. because. I, I have friends who went to journalism school who have their degrees and they work I... hard for those. And so I, I don't want to like to assume that or make a, an, an assumption that what I do is strict journalism, because I kind of like talking to people as they are, and uh, I'm I, and if it's like something comes up that has, has like a personal related story to what something that I experienced, it's like I don't mind sharing that as opposed to kind of maybe keeping it a little bit more. We need to find a word for that. Separate. Yeah. I, we need to find a really good word for that for what it lives in the storytelling space i mean it really it does, does. i was just it's, gonna say that yeah it's yeah. like a storytelling it's like a mike douglas kind of thing yeah and and, and uh everything happened very dramatically a couple of years ago it's like within npr and other places um it's like when um when shows like this american life came on the air and it became like crazy popular yeah. there was mm -hmm. th there was articles written at the time of a division in NPR as whether it's like to be hard news or more storytelling, like you were saying. It's like, and so it's like one of the guys, it's like, I think it's like split off and created his own company. I think he ended up creating Audible or something like that. They kind of like be more of a, of a book 
in podcast hub as opposed to maybe it's like the strict hard news that NPR was also known for at the time. Right, right. And I, I y'all, are y'all familiar with The Moth? Have you yeah, ever yes. listened to or from Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, one that, of the, that's that's one of the shows that I, I I'm the, the the local uh host for it's like on, on Oh, that's shift. exciting to know. Okay, now I idolize you because I love the moth. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say I had anything to do with it, but it's like I I I, I play it. But uh but yeah, the moth is like a, is a great example as well. It's like of of having first person stories and kind of having that uh, empathy and mm -hmm, kind of having yeah. that you know I've the, learned the, so much listening to different perspective i guess it's a strange so, perspective what do you think about podcasts v radio i mean it, are, are they going to take over is it what do you think well it, it, it's interesting because it's like um it seems like just about everybody that has like a podcast everybody has a podcast at this what point. and so well <laughs> not saying it's like everybody here about? <laughs> but but that was like the running joke. It's like for a lot of comedians, it's like to the point where a lot of decent sized comedians were purposely not doing a podcast because they end up being a guest on everybody else's podcast. Exactly. You might as well. Yeah. And so it's like, they can just like show links to that. And that was kind of like a joke to itself. Um, I, it's, it's hard. It's like to say, it's like, because I think the problem is also uh, too many. And it's like, and so folks would bring that up too. It's like, you can, you can find a podcast it's like over just about any subject you could think of and it's like and and, and it'll be good it'll be entertaining it'll be something it'll definitely have an audience like somebody will find it um but then you like also have when itunes made podcasts for free to stream that was a an open the gate it's like for everybody to create their their own podcast and have it hosted by yeah. itunes at the time but it also meant like there was like a billion podcasts to choose from and so it you, you sometimes you can get lost in the shuffles like a little bit depending on like what your what your topics are and who you're trying to you know who you're trying to reach but i i think you know that you can't put the i think the podcast it's like industry is out there and it's like and they, and, and they're going to be doing well it's like for a long period of time uh, mm -hmm. I don't, the, the the other trick is it's like trying to find something that creates profitability there's been more than a few podcast companies come up and everybody is like going, oh, it's like, well, we're going to do uh, this this thing that's kind of like a takeoff on serial or something like that. It's like true crime and yeah, or, or storytelling podcasts where they create narratives. It's like with a back with the Foley artists. It's like in, in all this other stuff. And it's like and that, that's very adventurous and cool, but it all depends on if it hits. If it if it mm -hmm. if it hits and becomes viral and becomes the thing, then it's like it was a bet that paid off. If it doesn't um it's kind of hard to fund the next thing so it's mm -hmm. I, I see that being a problem sometimes it's like with creators it's like being able to like to fund their projects it's like if, if, if for some reason that the stars don't align even right though it's even though it's good and so yeah yeah i i i it, the same thing kind of happens in radio only it's a what do they use like a nielsen rating it, it's it's the same <laughs> thing they use i mean isn't it kind of the tv i was going to compare it to the television rating thing a, a little bit and and scoop may be able to speak to this but it's like at the time it was like when i was probably more heavy into uh uh commercial radio they were transitioning it's like from doing uh, notebooks where it's like listeners is like would write down it's like the stations that they heard that day and that and how long oh wow and so very subjective they'll be up it's like to the listeners favorite stations and all this other stuff now they have like a little pager a ppm meter and so you're the person is paid like i think of like 75 bucks or something like that to carry this pager with them 24 7 and then whenever they're done with their day and they put it on the dock it connects to the internet and downloads all the things that it heard up to five minutes it's like uh, ambiently so it's like if you go into a store and hear music or it's like if you're in the car and you listen to the radio it picks up all that you know interstitial stuff and it figures out it's like uh, and compiles it's like how many hours in a day is or, or pieces of hours of a day it's like of a station that you listen to and that's how that's how it's like a uh, wow the whole thing is built on and it's crazy because that is crazy. yeah i mean 
Sounds like a privacy, a privacy problem there too. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that. I'm like, what all is it capturing? Like, right. Know about this? Yeah. <laughs> Who's well, walking around doing this? <laughs> but there, there's there's like a, 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 a sub signal inside radios like that's made for this thing. Oh, oh, it's okay. like yeah. a dog whistle, basically. Like yeah. only dogs can hear it and radios can talk to it. Got right. It. <laughs> and, and it's and it's kind of weird because it's like uh, um, the, the the whole idea is like of these things that, that you're trying to reach a diverse uh, audience of like of, of folks of all different types of economic echelons to carry these things. But it comes down to it as like, who's going to carry this? And it's like, uh, who needs that 75 box? And it's like, and it's like, is that your, is that, does that fit your audience? And how reliable is it? Yeah. <laughs> and, and the and, and how how reliable is it's like is the data from something like that? And it's like if you have like a company like Ford and you're coming out it's like with this million dollar ad buy, you're gonna come out it's like to the top three stations, it's like in a particular market, and that's it. So it's like okay. if you're number one in your area, then you get the highest ad rate possible and you get your pick of the litter, it's like of any advertiser you want. If you're number four or five, you have to start scrambling. And if you're like 12, 13, 15 in a particular market, you could be, you know, uh, it's like hurting pretty hard. It's like trying to trying to fill time and trying to like to sell that that at that, that time. And so it's 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 a little lopsided. It's like needless to say. Yeah, it's um, you say a it, thing to uh, to accomplish. You know, in, 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 in the online world, you know, you can actually get those kind of statistics on who's listening and where they're listening from and how long they're listening. You know, we, you know, on, on our podcast, we use a service called Blueberry that gives us really detailed stuff. It's like, who are they? Where are they? How long were they on? How many times have they visited? And that's helpful, but uh, there's no standardization in the online world. So no one really recognizes any of these things as being the indicator of, well, this is something we should advertise on. And a lot of us, like us, you know, our, our podcast, you know, we don't advertise, have ads. You know, we, we ask it, you know, to send Somebody it. wants to sponsor us. <laughs> Well, I, I'm 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 really happy for those it's like who can make it work, or somebody who gets an investor it's like to make it work, it's like for the ads, it's like because, um, yeah, that's another thing. It's like uh, what is it, uh, Mailchimp? It's like it's a it's a it's a mail service. It's like you hear that them at their ads. It's like on a lot of podcasts, especially it's like a lot of comedy podcasts, and so comedians mm -hmm. even joke a little bit about it. It's like hey, do do your mail. Chimp uh, live read. It's like where you're talking about like how people ought to sign up for a mail chimp. It's like, oh, cool. Like, the YouTubers are always trying to sling. Oh, this that was a poor choice of words, but uh, uh. <laughs> sex, sex toys. I mean, that's like the only people who will sponsor some of them are like romantics toys for your yeah, partner, I, which I, I think is. Creator. Zip recruiter. I Zip recruiter. Advertise yeah. quite a bit. Um, I, I hear those guys. Of, there's a couple of safety uh, companies that I've heard. I mean, I, I think advertisers are finding their way into the podcast space and kind of to Scoop's yeah. point, Inc., the data is a lot better um, in the digital, in the podcast. So you can just see hard numbers and go, look, I've got this audience. And I think the other thing that's really interesting about podcasting is sort of the crowdsourcing of support. So, you know, you might have investors, yeah. but I also know podcasters that, have really seriously crowdsourced their funding and are fully supported by their audience, which, you know, is get, again, listener driven radio. It's like it's, they're not being sponsored by an investor as much Ethan as they are actually. Ethan Klein. Oh my God, yeah. that man, he's just made a shit ton of money. Yeah. So uh, Tracy, what, what kind of, um, what, what kind of show is your favorite kind of show? I know you're doing one now where oh no i got unplugged hold on <laughs> i hear you okay yeah thank you um where uh do you do you like the music shows do you like the interview shows do you like politics uh do you prefer to interview artists How, what do you where's your heart well it, it's interesting because uh yeah when i first started off as with what's new it's like it was kind of like these are the 12 songs that i like each week 
type show. And it's kind of, right. but then I was also seeing a lot of people do that. And a lot of people were doing, uh, uh, it's like, a, uh, it's like WordPress blogs and things. It's like uh, with song download links and things like that. And it's like, and a lot of them I like, you know, uh, Pitchfork, Gorilla versus Bear. It's like, um, uh, it's like uh, there's 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 a uh, what is it? Uh, there's a couple of uh, who, whose names I'm skipping on right now, but there's I ended up thinking it's like well I, I need to kind of find kind of some, something different that's also more interesting to me, and so I ended up like doing more long form interviews. Another thing that also kind of uh, spurred me in that direction was years ago. It's like at uh, KGSR. Uh, their morning guy was uh, Brian Beck, and I like him a lot. He's a great guy. Uh, he came in one time, it's like after he got off the air and was just kind of down because he said, it's like, man, I had an, an opportunity to interview David Crosby. And it's like, going, yeah, I was like, mm -hmm. really? And this was like early. This was like maybe 2010 or so. It's like where it, and I didn't necessarily know him that well. And it, yeah, I said, yeah, that sounds great. And it's like going, yeah, but it's like the management says it's like uh didn't approve it it's like why why are you talking about it? it's like they said it's like nobody listens to people talking they want to hear music oh. and I, I was like going well you, <laughs> oh my gosh you need to do that interview because it's like it's david crosby and he was coming to town say like, to promote uh, i think crosby stills and ash it's like at the Irwin center and it's what? like if and this was still you know 2009 it's like they they had podcasts it's like but it was still kind of like not a big thing yet Right. And so um, I was like, yeah, it's like put it together, record it, make an excuse to just talk to them. It's like, just say yes anyway. And it's like, when I was like, yeah, it, but I you mean, could just, you could just tell his heart was out of it. And shortly thereafter, he retired within about two years or so. It's like after that, wow. re he retired. And I think that was the reason why was that when he realized that morning radio wasn't the way it used to be. It's like he, when, he, when somebody calls him up and it's like, says, Hey, it's like, you want to do something that's super cool. And, and, Somebody else said it's like that nobody would listen to it. And I think that took, I think it took him out of it a bit and it kind of oh, broke his heart. Man. It's pretty heartbreaking. Just in yeah, general. Probably, that makes me sad. <laughs> I saw so, that sort of thing happen in the Bay Area when I was working out there. And it was usually because somebody had taken over programming at uh, one of the rock stations, especially. They were the worst. And mm -hmm. they had a deal going to where it, it they got richer if this music got played more. So they didn't want anybody babbling on. And uh, they were even pissed mm -hmm. at, the, uh, uh, at that commercials. <laughs> because they, wow. were, they were getting a kickback from all the, uh, with all the record labels. And that was a big deal. And what was that called? That was like a, a yeah, Payola. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's officially uh it's like illegal Hayola. officially yeah yeah <laughs> but you know back when i was you know music editor at zodiac news service in san francisco uh i'd get all the records and all the concert tickets and, and whatever and i was tempted a few times because there were plenty of guys out saying look you know if you uh say something really nice in your publication uh you know we'll uh you know, give you a fifth of scotch or, or, or something stupid, or we'll give you 50 bucks or a hundred bucks. And it's like, no, <laughs> I saw what happened to those people, but that, right? that no. was still alive and uh, not, not well, but it was still alive in the music business for a long time. And you know, it, it, it comes and goes, people get busted. So they calm down, but uh, that's a regular temptation out there. And especially in radio music radio. Hello? Well, it, it, there was a story, it's like a few years back where I think it was uh, somebody within uh, uh, Taylor Swift's people when she was like high, when she was like the queen and could do no wrong. Um, there was like something about how it's like it was something between her and her camp and uh, iHeartMedia or something like that. It's mm -hmm. like where there was like a certain number of guaranteed spins an hour and it's like for her songs it's like or it's like the top three songs it's like from her album and for some reason it didn't uh raise to the uh the level of payola but it was like going man this sounds exactly like payola to me it's like and so it's it sounds like y'all guys made like this this exclusivity deal yeah. it's like for for her songs it's like and 
but I, I haven't heard like much said about that lately. And it, mm. I, I, but I, I can totally imagine, like Scoop was saying, that uh, folks could be kind of tempted. But it's like right now, all it seems like all the radio playlists are very kind of tightly predicted. Um, you know, that's one thing it's like about co-op. It's like it's kind of individual programmer ran. So it's like each week it's a different, each, each hour it's a different show. And it's like with a mm -hmm. different playlist. I've rarely played the same song twice in 12 years uh -huh. and uh, that's that's a that's just kind of like a random thing and i can say that it's like well, among some of the other friends but that's small radio even like you know i i you know it's like not to not to speak out of school it's like about uh, kut and kutx but they have a music committee and they kind of agree on what the playlists are and they do have like a diversity of stuff especially overnights they play things it's like that you wouldn't necessarily hear it's like uh, on any other station so their their lists of songs that they pull from is pretty deep or deeper but they still have like a certain uh, schedule to it all and there's only like mm -hmm. one or two freeform shows it's like on that channel it's like and so it's mm -hmm. it's it's kind of the nature of the business it's like where some of this stuff is like it's very predicted and proven in other markets it's like of, of similar formats it's like everybody kind of looks at who's playing what where is like in each town and and what their ratings are and they they end up like matching each other fairly closely yeah the reason you hear so much of the same you know songs being played on all the radio stations is because most of them are being programmed by just a small number of people in the major market you know in new york los angeles Chicago, where these big media companies are located, the ones that own most of the meaningful radio stations, you know, it used to be these were all locally owned and they were re reflecting the needs of the local community. But all, you know, when they deregulated you know, the ownership of radio, then it suddenly became a big monopoly thing where you had companies owning three, 400, uh, radio stations and tv stations at the same time so it's there's not a lot of diversity in the programming it's coming from a few people yeah. we don't have public uh television anymore in this in this uh town it's gone they shuttered yeah. probably 10 years ago they just it, shut off mm -hmm. which sucks because some of my favorite 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 shows ever were on there there was like, like the original oh. Well, Alex Jones, yes. The, back then, yes, <laughs> the absolutely. I loved it's watching absolutely his. Absolutely alive. Absolutely he, he was. Alive. He was kind of funny then. It was like it was exactly. Like, he, he wasn't the monster he became. It's like he, the... he. Stephanie and I talk about that all the time. He used to be hilarious. I mean, I used to, I used to laugh and think, oh, <laughs> and then he was talking to the president, and yeah. I got really freaked out. Um. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, it's like, and, and Austin was one of the first places. It's like with a, a really good, strong public access television. Uh, it's like, and, and we're we're also it's like with KLRU. I think it's like uh, one of the first. It's like public PBS stations. It's like in the yes. nation. Mm -hmm. It's like there's a tradition there, and yeah, yeah I, I think uh, um, I, I think I want to say ACC, the uh, Austin Community College District. Mm -hmm. I think they ended up uh, buying or taking over public access TV. For the cable channels mm -hmm. but i'm not sure it's like how it's being managed right now it's like i i i, I think I, you're I, right about that so i remember yeah there's i'm, I'm hopeful I, I'm, I'm hopeful too because we had some really good programming here and i'm taught i even include flash jordan in that she was an absolute fucking joy to watch i could watch her and did for, for hours and hours i, and I mean hours. honestly it was like one of the primary things that i watched with public yes. television like yes and you know when when people come through like uh, musicians and and celebrities generally they'll go to public access but they definitely go to public radio because yeah. they want to know the feel of who they're coming in and they I, almost all the artists that i you know have been interviewed that i listened to have said that that you know you want to you want to go straight for the for the underground and find out who the people are yeah there's a there's still a sense of credibility with a lot of that and uh, and, and you're totally right it's like with uh, austin public right uh, public access uh, it was a lot of chances for bands to make a video and get it on the air in front of people and 
you know, you can make a song. And so there might be a, a couple of local music radio shows, but it's like, if you want playability where you can be seen, it's like all day, it's like a, in a rotation, public access television, it's like, was the place to do it. And it was yeah. easy programming for them. It's like, if they didn't have a slot, they'd just put on a bunch of music videos from local bands. So. And you yeah, remember the, the drives, I'm sorry, Scoop. No, I'm just, I'm just going to say that, you know, the commercial broadcasters hated public access because they, they, they wanted them to go away, especially when, uh, uh, an example, you know, uh, the Bay Area had a lot of really good public access stations. They'd do anything, and they had a lot of music on there. The, uh, this was before MTV, so if you wanted to do a music mm -hmm. video, you had to do it on public access because commercial mm -hmm. radio, I mean, commercial TV wasn't going to uh, air it. But you saw all sorts of interesting artists, you know, musicians, comedians, what crazy people like me people. <laughs> isn't that kind of how wasn't that an elvira and how she got her start oh yeah we used to watch her in la i mean she yeah. Was yeah uh there there's a there's a famous a relatively famous just like show here in austin it's like called dave tv and mm -hmm. it started mm -hmm. at the, in the very beginning of the 90s <laughs> and it's like dave pruitt and it's like and he interviewed everybody and he would do it's like a live in the studio show every week and he would invite bands that were coming through town just like all right yep. come in uh, set up and play and then we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit and he did that every week and mm -hmm. he's I, got yeah a, a i remember of, that very well <laughs> yeah a lot of people like uh, came through it's like and he has like some famous ones it's like he has the last television interview with uh bill hicks and he interviewed mm -hmm. bill hicks before bill hicks that. passed away i did not yeah. know that and uh, they they talked about it's like his uh his his appearance it's like on david Lennerman and like and things like that but that's something that you can find on youtube now mm -hmm. and i've seen that dave, before dave's uh momentum i think is kind of shifts he still does things but it's like he moved and came back and so i, I i'm not sure if he's like uh all in but he's still it's like recording bands and still does stuff it's like and he makes things it's like for for the fun of it but um there's like some, some historic stuff there. It's like, and, and there's been some really good people. I met a guy, it's like, uh, that's been slowly putting together, it's like some of the old uh, Austin Public Access bits and it's like going through really? the, the, the archives. He's and, making yeah. a, isn't there somebody making a documentary out of it? It's a friend of mine knows, so I don't know him personally, but a yeah. friend of mine knows, I think maybe that's, the same person ooh. that yeah, he's been I, working I, on it for a couple of years at least, or a few years. I'm, go, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up his name is like but John's like is is like he he's a he's done a couple of screenings at the Austin Film Society right. Theater here in town. It's like of some of the things that he's put together, but there's it's it's precious stuff. It's like that that will never be reproduced, and so it's wow. like, and you and you gotta save it and so you can digitize it while you can. So. Mm -hmm. And something that's really cool. Speaking of digitizing, is that you? How long have you been working with uh, Thorn Dryer on Rag Radio, which is on uh, KOOP ninety one point seven? Yeah, that's probably my uh, other biggest claim to fame, really, because it's like I, I I I do my show and it's fun. It's like, but I I'm the engineer for Thorn for his show, and we met we we had the same orientation class at Co-op Radio. And so when in uh, October of 2009, when he was saying, it's like, I, I, prob I probably need somebody to help me um, make sure we're on time so I can press the buttons. And I happened to be like the hour before him. So I said, yeah, I'll do it. And I, it, it's been great. We've been doing it it's like since October of 2009. And um, wow, Thor that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. uh, it's, it's a bit of a history. It's like Thorne Dreyer uh, was an original editor of the Rack, which was an underground newspaper. It's like in the late 60s in Austin. It's like that sold on, it's like on campus at UT. And it was one of the first underground newspapers. And so he's oh, cool. kind of coming back from that. It's like in, in kind of using the Rag radio show and, and the rag blog is his online blog is to kind of continue that mission it's like of interviewing people and it's like getting stories out but we we met to, to a lot of pay people because of that we got to meet uh, dan rather we got to meet it's like robin Aww. rather and, and right. his his daughter and it's like and in, in the advocacy that the both of them are doing yeah. um, we got to we got to meet uh, um it's like shoot um we got to meet it's like one of the guys it's like from the angola three uh it's like we got to Oh, it's wow. like talk about his experiences being decades in who, uh, who are the, in, in uh, isolation in prison. 
Yeah. You guys interviewed, I, I missed the interview, but you interviewed uh, the woman and the man who started, uh, who sprung Timothy Leary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I can't remember her name. What's her name? Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's skipping on me because there was a guy who did a book about, it's like Timothy Leary. Oh, Minutaglio. Yeah. And like, he but, was, <laughs> yeah, and he was on uh, NBC the other night. Given really? Some, yeah. But uh, yeah, you've met you've met just a ton of people doing doing what you do, especially with Thorn, and that's just like the the coolest one of the coolest. Yeah. I'm so I'm so proud to be able to come out on that show uh, occasionally and and learn so much. Just sit back and learn from you guys. Well, uh, it's like I'm 49 and I'm the young guy, and so it's like it's kind of interesting. It's like to hear because that was all kind of like new experience. I knew a little bit, and I was like really interested. Is like in Austin history because I was yeah. coming to I, I missed it's like the uh the 80s and the in in most of the 90s it's like for the most part it's like in in definitely the 70s so it's like catching up it's like with that it's like it gave me a good excuse it's like to to, to kind of gleam a lot of information it's like off of that show and to his credit because of the rag and because of the rag radio it's like his interviews it's like are being published uh, the Briscoe yes. Center the that's Briscoe what Center, I was gonna it's say. Like, uh, UT Austin. Yeah. UT Austin. yeah, UT Austin's Briscoe Center is uh, archiving like all of the interviews and they're being transcribed and there's there, Thorne's currently working on a book it's like for um, to kind of because he came out with a book about the rag and it had a lot of the old stories it's like in it and now it's like it's kind of the companions like about rag radio and digitizing and transcribing a lot of the interviews that were done. And yeah, all the and interviews, very cool. great interviews. I had the good fortune of working with him when we were both at uh, KPFT in Houston, and I was the news director, and he was the uh, the afternoon personality. And he got way better interviews. You know, I mean, I, in there, you're know, trying to track people down, and he's, <laughs> you know, John Sinclair calls him from Ann Arbor, or <laughs> we, uh, Jerry Rubin just shows up, and you know. <laughs> It's that, true. It's crazy. It, it, it's it's pretty. It's pretty crazy. And then uh, I guess it's like also it's like about y'all's time there. It's like you get the chance to see the beginning of the cosmic cowboy aspect with yeah. uh, Michael Martin were, Murphy and all that. So they were at KPFT together when it got blown up, weren't you guys? Scoop, weren't you there? Uh, yeah, I came in right after the uh, bombing, and uh, you know. I was also working with Thorne at uh, Space City, his uh, underground paper in, in Houston. He's working on that too right now. Yeah, yeah. There, there's there's a bro, there's a book for, forthcoming on that as well. It's like with uh, Jim Nightbird and some others, stuff like I think, and Alice Embry. That's so, cool. so what's your um? What is your favorite thing that you've ever done? What is your favorite job? Your gig? Well, it's 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 like a job job. I think um, in addition you know, to his, radio stuff it's like i've i've gotten to work at uh a couple of theaters in town and be on sets it's like for films and things as a as an extra as an actor that's cool. um, as for like radio stuff it's like probably my most the, i got a couple of, of really big highlights but it's like one of my favorite things of all time was uh getting a chance to like to interview bob DeRoe. so bob DeRoe is a name that doesn't necessarily jump out it's like for a lot of people no He's a jazz guy. He uh, played as like a, it's like a, uh, Miles Davis liked him, and he played okay. as like a, one or two of his songs. But he's most famous for being the original composer of all these schoolhouse rock songs. Oh, so, oh my God! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love he, him. He wrote all that. Oh my God! He, he, oh. I'm just a Bill, Interplanet Janet. Um, all that. I was Good I was just playing time. all of these the other day. I, I listen to I listen, I have them on my Those playlist. are my favorite. I thought I was lucky because I met Eliza Gilkison, whose dad wrote Bare Necessities, but you just totally one upped me like by actually you probably 30 awesome. upped me on that one. That well, is such a that's so cool. Well, I, yeah, I will say Eliza Gilkinson is a sweetheart and yes. been been very nice. It's like to be able to have her. With, I think you and I both, it's like Susie, it's like a, on on Thorn's show, it's like a, with being able to talk with her, and she's amazing. And 
it's been too long since I've seen her last. It's like she's yeah. really, really great and has a great story. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> for for Bob for Bob Duro, he somebody at the uh, Austin uh, or the Alamo Draft House was like was saying it's like I'm a Bob Duro fan. I'm going to see if I can get him to come to town. So they got him to do a screening of Schoolhouse Rock shorts oh, and to cool. play at the Continental Club. It's like it, oh it, my you know, God. the classic club. It's like in Austin, and I think. I won, if not like maybe one of like three people who was clued in on it enough to say, going, I need to talk to this guy. Yeah. Because it's Bob DeRoe. And it's like, and he was just the nicest guy on the on the phone. He was just like, yeah, I'll just come into town. I hope people like it. I hope people come out and say, like going, I, I think. And so it was, it was really nice. And it was definitely like kind of like one of those rare things that I, knew at the time that I probably wouldn't be able to get a second chance to be able to make this happen. And sure enough that, you know, he, he has since passed and that's happened to a couple of folks that I've interviewed. Uh, it's like, I, I, I have that curse. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I joke, I joke, it's, but uh, not available, but, but, <laughs> but, but, he, but he has passed since like, and so it was like, I, I was just, it was nice to kind of have like that moment and kind really of like cool. a, a childhood type, you know, right in the fields it's like it was a, it was a kind of a big deal so yeah, yeah no kidding that's i mean i stephanie and i grew up at the same during the same time so uh that was a big deal to us we learned a lot conjunction junction you know come on man that's some good it's stuff. great yeah 15 18 yep there you go. Uh, i have to confess that was after my time but my daughter grew up in all of that <laughs> It was good stuff. It was good stuff. It, well, it's, it has last ability. Congress. Yeah, it does. It's. I mean, for right now, before they change everything in our constitution or just set it on fire, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, everything seems to be going great. Yeah, I, it, it, it's it's one of those things. It's like where it's like those type songs and shorts. It's like will be seen forever. For as long as people remember, they'll get played and people will find them. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing box sets and DVDs. It's like an I just hope they're sharing it with their kids so that kids do know and do remember. They I actually so. showed the whole school. Uh, they, they did like a Schoolhouse Rock special maybe like three or four years ago on mainstream TV. And they did like a two hour special. And they showed like all the old, I, I was like watching and recording and like, like posting online, like, oh my God. I'm, I'm like a schoolhouse rock star. Okay, no, <laughs> rock fan. <laughs> I'm a groupie. <laughs> hey, Tracy, uh, will you come back and do this again with us and share more stories? Yeah, honestly, it's like I was like thinking I could like talk for a long time. With you. I know you should come back and <laughs> hang out with us some more. This is kind of what we do. We just hang out and talk about story. We just tell stories and learn from each other and talk about some stuff that's really cool that's um you know topical and other stuff that's really cool like buddhism and stuff so we're okay. eclectic <laughs> but we would love it if you'd come back yeah, yeah. We're, we're getting toward the end here about five minutes away and uh before we uh, depart do you have stuff in your uh media bucket list that you want to do that you haven't done yet Ooh. Oh question. man, um, good question. There, there's, there's a couple of things I would like to get a second shot at, and uh, mm -hmm. we could talk about them more in like on the next show. It was like, but one time I met uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, and I pissed him off, and so I feel extremely bad now you about have doing to that. Come back. Now you have one time to come during back. South by, so I want to do over. I want to do over with Bill Nye, the science guy, okay. and I, I got a chance to say like, on the red carpet at South by one year to to meet Frank Oz. And again, talking about childhood stuff, we uh, at that time th there was this video that went out. It's like uh, this parody video of Yoda talking, uh, singing about seagulls. And if oh. you just if you just Google seagulls and Yoda, and it's like, and I and at the time I got the chance to talk with with him about that for about ten minutes because he was the original voice of Yoda, and right. and how much he loved it. He thought it was amazing, and I. I, that that interview got lost to time in a in a in a hard drive that crashed, and so I want to I want to I want to do over that one. That one's that one's not available, unfortunately. The that next like time lost. you the next time you come on, we'll do uh, we'll call the show uh, do overs and missed opportunities, uh, and and it'll be all of our stories of do overs and that we really want. <laughs> 
Yeah, I find that theme. I have a lot of them. I have a lot of them. That's going to have to be a two hour show. That could be like a three parter. (laughs) Right? (laughs) We'll have to bring some of your greatest hits or recordings along. You know, know, things that you're allowed to to rebroadcast and do a little show off. Yeah, yeah, I, I've I've gotten like some some folks to like tell some stories. It's like that I thought it's like would be really cool. And if I could come up like with like little little bits, it's like you know a couple minute bits. It's like I'd definitely share those with y'all guys. Yeah. So. that would be but, that's always fun. Hey, do you um, remember when I uh, when I um, stalked you at the Shiny Ribs concert? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I th- yeah i think so maybe i, I think sent it- you that pic i disguised my my pic my number and i took a picture of you from up on the balcony <laughs> and i sent it to you and i, I watched that, yes. you open it and i was like i can see you and you were like what the fuck <laughs> and this is like looking around it's like going that's pretty clever yeah i appreciate that that was good yeah I like to try to get you when I can. <laughs> I've been the beneficiary as like a friend since like in that way. I, I, I don't always take photos of myself. It's like with other folks just because I have too many things thinking about and going on. But I've had like a couple of friends and like say, ah, oh, I, I, I think you'd appreciate this and send a, send, a, <laughs> send a pic of me doing something media related. And so I, I, I appreciate that all the time. It's like, that's Absolutely. He's training to be a creepy stalker. <laughs> when i was at uh, uh kgsr uh for some reason uh it's like this thing came up it's like called tracing and uh, for in case any of my friends it's like from kgsr klbj it's like our uh, 101 x it's like is listening to this it's like they'll, they'll appreciate this story for some reason for a while there i i walked in softly or something it's like so it's like there would be a couple of uh fellow dj guys it's like at the bar and i would just kind of walk in and then somebody would turn around and go, oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> and it's like, it's like I, I just walked normally. I wasn't trying to do anything. And so that became tracing for, tracing, uh, like that's it's a hilarious. for about five, <laughs> for, for a couple of years there. It was like, it was like doing, tracing. tracing somebody was just like a thing. Tracing. It became a verb. <laughs> just all of a sudden you're there. I didn't think I was like, I was that trendy is like, or that that famous in some ways it's like but oh, you are you definitely are i noticed <laughs> that i noticed that over the years that i've known you i have noticed how popular you are actually it's it's true people in austin know who you are that's I, why we have to we have to tell everybody you're on the show <laughs> <laughs> well, i i appreciate it i i get self-conscientious in uh, um what is it imposter syndrome is like is 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 is, is, yep. is a thing and and that 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 comes up it's it like, is where's, a thing where you kind of like going, well, I don't know. It's like I des- I, I deserve that attention, you know. It's like or these opportunities. And oh, so I it's, think you do. You've put yep. your time in, man. You know, it's time to reap those rewards. Well, it's getting to be time to say nighty night, but that this has been a lot of fun, Tracy. Yeah. We will definitely yes, have you definitely. back as often as you'll come and yeah. With us. But, it's definitely a real pleasure. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I really do appreciate Thank it. You. Come back. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll see you next week on RAG Radio. <laughs> yeah. 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 RAG Radio. Uh, uh, it's like you can hear it on co op. It's like at 2 p.m. Uh, every Friday. So be on the lookout for that. So. And uh, you know, I will be posting this as soon as I get it uh, <laughs> transferred. Normally, this is live, but the technology gods did not smile upon us this time. So Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That's what we have to say.